Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us this morning for our Trojan Bite Size. Today we're covering OneDrive, and you're going to be having a trainer, Declan Cook. He's joining me this morning for this. He's our senior technical consultant, and he'll be answering any questions you have and bringing you through the, the presentation today. Before we start, if you want to ask any questions, um, there's a panel on the right hand side of your screen. You can ask your questions there and we'll try and get to them today. If we don't get through them all, we will get back to you to, with the answers. And as always, I will be sending out a recording of the webinar and the slide deck after today's session. So don't worry about taking notes, you'll get that afterwards. And if you have any questions that you think of afterwards, don't be afraid to give me an email back and we'll get back to you. So without further delay, I'll pass you over to Declan. That's great, Anne. Thank you very much. Um, welcome everyone to my uh, first Trojan Bite Size webinar just on Microsoft OneDrive. I'm sure you've all heard of OneDrive over the years and it's kind of it's changed a lot over the years. Microsoft really have um, brought, brought it on leaps and bounds over the last year or so in with the advent of Windows 10 and all that integration. So now is a good time to kind of consider starting to use it as a replacement for other products you might be using for personal cloud storage or anything like that. So I'll kick off and um, I'll just go through a few of the features of OneDrive and then I'll show um, some cool features that built in and how you could utilize it for your own your own business or whatever. So basically, um, Microsoft OneDrive, it's available to users with a Microsoft 365 business basic license and above. So that's pretty much anyone who uses Office 365 or Microsoft 365, they have already paid for a license for OneDrive. It comes as part of your license. Um, what it comes with is one terabyte of personal file storage. So in general, that's more than enough for most users anyways. It's quite a large amount of storage, especially if you're only working with Word files and Excel files, you're never going to fill it. You'll only fill it with media such as videos or, or, or photos. But um, as I said, it's very generous and that's per user. So anyone who is licensed gets one terabyte of storage each. Um, with OneDrive, you can utilize a, a very good feature called, um, it's just called your file backup and it can back up your desktop files, your documents and pictures directly to the cloud. So what it does there is um, it automatically points your desktop, your documents and your pictures folders directly to your cloud storage. So as you save to any of those locations on your PC or laptop, um, the data is saved directly up to the cloud. So if you lose the device or whatever, you can just um, get a new laptop or tablet and sign in and all your data is there and secure. So it's um, a very powerful feature. I'll show you how to turn that on as well. Um, what it has as well has been built in ransomware protection. We all know what the environment is like out there now. Some people may have been hit with ransomware and they know the pain that that brings. So this little feature here is if you get hit with ransomware, um, and all your files are encrypted, you can actually roll back your OneDrive for business to how it was prior to the ransomware attack. So say if you get attacked yesterday, you can roll back to last week and you can roll back up to 30 days previous um, and you'll be able to restore all your files there. So it's a very powerful feature. Um, it's just a quick restore and your files are available immediately and you, you don't have to really worry about paying any ransom unless you've lost very critical data within that one day put time period or whatever. Um, another cool feature, so Microsoft are really trying to use this whole cross-platform uh, thinking just so that all their apps, their services are available across all types of devices. There was a time you were just limited to your laptop and that was pretty much all you had to use um, or your PC. But now, whether it's iOS or Android or iPad or Samsung Galaxy tablet or whatever, there's an app available for all your Microsoft business products. So there is a OneDrive for business app, which will allow you to access your files on the go um, as long as you have internet access. Um, another cool feature as well, which is come on, um, is called online file collaboration, where if you share a file with other users within your organization, or indeed with anyone external to your organization, um, you can both work on it at the same time. Multiple users can work on it at the same time. And you can see the, if it's an Excel document, you can see what cell that user is working in. You can see the data getting typed live and they and vice versa you can see what other people are typing in in the document it's very good because it centralizes your data to one location 
previously when you were you're probably used to attaching a word document or an excel document and send that off to whoever you want you need to send it to and um they'll edit it and send it back and then you'll edit it and then you'll send it to another person and then suddenly this document you don't know which version of the file you're working on so this whole idea of online collaboration basically means you have one central document that everyone can work on at the same time which removes that whole doubt about which version is the current one and you don't have to go renaming documents to version one two three or four or anything like that it's all controlled within that one file um i'll also run through with uh, the secure file sharing features so you can share a file directly out of your onedrive and all you're essentially doing is sharing a link to the file you're not sending the file anywhere so you maintain control of that file at all times. You can set the link to expire, so you can give someone access to the file or folder in your OneDrive for just a week or two days or whatever you, you specify. And um, if you, you can also disable any shares that you've set up as well. So I'll show you how to manage how you can share, share data and how you can disable those shares if you deem it's necessary you don't need to share them any anymore and also there's an online portal so in addition to having access from your laptop pc or any of your devices there is an online portal as well to access your OneDrive. So if you really did need to get access to your files, you could call into an internet cafe. I wouldn't really recommend it, but it's just it's to give an example that you can get access to your files as long as you have internet access. But um, you could be able to get it on a web browser over your mobile phone either. So I'll continue on there and just go through some of the further points with OneDrive for Business. Um, it works really well with Windows 10. Um, there's a desktop client on, built into Windows 10 that uses a feature called Files on Demand. So if you were using a lot of your storage, like the full one terabyte of data in OneDrive, you don't want all that data synced to your local device because your internet will be just clogged up with syncing those files up and down constantly. So this little feature called Files on Demand, it makes it look like that the files are located on your machine, but when you double click on them, it only downloads them as you access them. So the last, if a file is accessed in the last 30 days, it'll be locally on your machine. And after 30 days, it gets deleted physically off the machine, but it's still available within OneDrive. Um, it, it's a cool feature because it saves a lot of storage, especially with people using um, kind of lightweight laptops that wouldn't have large hard drives or whatever, that you don't have to carry all your data around with you, but it is fully accessible as long as you have internet access. Um, one thing to consider, look, you're probably very familiar with the likes of Google Drive or Dropbox at the moment. Um, if you're using those, uh, you should really start considering using OneDrive for business. It, it has all the same features and more, and essentially you're paying for OneDrive anyways, so there's no point really paying for Dropbox or Google Drive with another provider a year nearly as well to just start using the OneDrive for business. And it's very easy to transfer your data across into it. So um, if you ever need a hand with that, you can just call us in Trojan and we can sort you out there. But um, like Dropbox has, there, there are good features as well in Dropbox and Google Drive, but they do have fairly limited storage for free accounts. And as I said, you get one terabyte of storage of OneDrive for business. So you're as well to use utilize that. And it also uses your one username and password to access all your Office 365 services. So it makes it easier. It's not just another username and password you have to remember. Um, just in addition to that, if you find yourself you're, you, when you're using OneDrive that you're sharing files a lot with the same users or, you know, there's a lot of collaboration going on, I would probably not use OneDrive. OneDrive is really for personal use and ad hoc file sharing. It's not for a constant file sharing. So um, if you are if you have that requirement, I'd advise moving to something like Teams or SharePoint, which it, SharePoint essentially is the same as OneDrive, but it's designed for multiple users. And I'll actually do a webinar on that next um, Thursday so that you'll have a fair idea and you'll be able to see the similarities and the differences between SharePoint and OneDrive on that webinar. So, um, but just it's good to keep in mind. I'm sure you're all familiar with Teams now at the moment. Teams basically sits on top of SharePoint or OneDrive and all the Microsoft products and essentially brings uh, brings them all into one location. So we've a webinar coming up on that in two weeks time, I think, um, as well. So 
So I'll just cover what I'm going to go through with you um, in terms of using OneDrive. So we're going to log in to the OneDrive online. I'm going to show you how you can sync your OneDrive with your desktop app. So essentially it looks like your files are stored on your local PC or laptop. I'll show you as well a demo from a mobile phone, how you access the OneDrive app and how you can say take a photograph on your mobile and it'll upload straight away to OneDrive and it'll be available there across all your devices instantly. So it's a very cool feature, especially for sales guys out in the road that might need to take images of whatever they need to take images of, but um, it's a cool feature that just means everything's instantly available for you. And also I'll show you how to turn on the OneDrive backup where I spoke earlier about how it backs up your desktop, your documents and your pictures on your, your local device. Um, and also I'll go through all the various sharing options you have for sharing files and folders. Um, it's quite powerful and it's very easy to remove a share, as I said, if um, if you deem that necessary. Um, also, there's a cool, some cool security features as well. So if you do share a file um, or a folder with a user, um, essentially it sends an email and it goes into your send items so you can trace from what date that you actually shared that file. But if when someone clicks on the link to access the file, you will receive an email to say that someone has accessed that file and is this the expected behavior? So it's kind of a, a warning to tell you that you have shared this folder or file and um, you can, if you did by accident or whatever, you'll at least be notified someone's accessing the file and you can disable the share then after that. Um, there's a couple of different status icons on the OneDrive app, so it's no harm just to run through what they all mean. There's a kind of a cloud icon and then there's a sync icon and then there's a green tick to show um, that the data is actually stored locally. And then to finish it up, so I won't keep you too long, um, I'll show you how you can link your Office applications directly to your OneDrive data. So there's a nice feature there called Auto Save, where every change you make is automatically changed or saved in the document and synced up to OneDrive. So um, you can have, I think it's up to 999 versions of one file and every little change you make is automatically saved. So if you do mess up a document, you can roll it back to the way it was previously five minutes ago or whatever. I know you have the undo button, but this is actually more powerful. Even if you close the document and reopen it, you can still revert back to any of the previous versions of that file. Um, that's with your version history and the auto save feature together. So um, I will actually just log on to a machine that's currently running. Um, OneDrive and I'll give you a little demonstration of it. So first off, if you want to access your OneDrive portal, we'll do it online first. So you essentially open up your web browser and go to portal.office.com and you can sign in with your username and password. That's your Office 365 username and password. And once you log in, you'll be presented with this screen. Essentially, this is all your apps that you have available to you within Office 365. And today we're focusing on OneDrive. As you can see, you can use Word and Excel online. You have SharePoint here, you have Teams, and you have Outlook as well. So you can access all those apps as well while you're online but as i said we're, we're sticking with the onedrive here so all you do click on onedrive and it's that simple and just let it load there for a second and there's all my files here it's not an awful lot because it's a demo set of data but i would in my own personal onedrive i have a, a, i keep all my data in it and it's 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 very handy. Um, so you can open up your, say, the common sort of file types online and edit them directly within your OneDrive. So you, if you just click on that Excel file, you can open it up and it opens up Excel online and you have access to the document there and you can edit it online, which is a very handy feature. Um, there is a limitation on certain features within the online version. Um, you might be able to do certain formulas or calculations or whatever, but you can, if you find it's too limited, and to be honest, it can be a bit sluggish as well. You can just open up the file in your local, local Excel by clicking open in your desktop app. So you have multiple options there to access your files. But generally speaking, you probably won't be working online that often. You'd probably prefer to work on your local Excel 
and keep working away with your, your local files that way. So the best way to do that is actually to sync your OneDrive library locally to your PC. So it looks like the files are on your machine, but they're actually up in the cloud. And um, the easiest thing to do there is just click on your sync button here on the top. It'll prompt you here, do you want to open up Microsoft OneDrive, which has to be installed on your PC, but if it's Windows 10, it's likely to be there already. So hopefully this will pop up and allow us to sync it. And it'll ask you to sign in. So that's the account I'm using here. And we'll just sign in here. PC is a little bit sluggish. Hopefully, yeah, here it comes now, it's loading. So that's it. Um, if you're only, I've done this already, so that's why I haven't been prompted for the password, but if you're doing it for the first time, you will be asked for your username, which you should pull down from that sync button automatically, but it definitely will ask for your password before you can connect. So essentially, it tells you here when you're setting up OneDrive that your physical folder where everything will be stored will be that directory there. You can change the location if you want. Uh, you can just run through that wizard. Um, there's just nice features there with those status icons that I'll go through with you shortly. And Sheriff essentially is just telling you what you can do with OneDrive. So you can just fly through those and then you can hit later on that. And you get this option to open the OneDrive folder. So within Windows Explorer, you want to see all your files here. So we can minimize out of our cloud um, version of OneDrive at the moment because we're working away locally here. So within OneDrive, there's all my files and folders and no folders in there at the moment. But as you can see, there's a little cloud icon here which basically means the file isn't on my hard drive at all. It's um, it's within the cloud and I can double click on the file. And you see the status has changed to the little green tick. That means OneDrive has downloaded the file for me. Now it's a blank workbook anyway, so we'll close it. But it's downloaded the file for me and it's been stored locally. But that means any changes you make to that file will automatically be synced up to OneDrive. So that's a handy little thing. And also you'll see a little sync icon. It's very hard to get it to come up, but it's two arrows going around in a circle. Basically, it's telling you that it's uploading or downloading the file, particularly if it's a large document. You will see that a few times with OneDrive that it's uploading the data from the cloud. It's uploading it from your PC to the cloud or downloading it. So um, we can work away on that. Um, so what I also want to show you is how to access the files from your mobile device. So that's it, accessing it on your local device. And from your mobile device, you can just download the OneDrive app. which, as I said, is available across the, across all your devices. Um, open up OneDrive. And essentially, that's it there, the same list of files. All you have to do for the first time when you're signing in is put in your username and password. And we can open up your Excel document. You can get a preview of it there as well. Hopefully, this will load for me here now. So that's an Excel document. So it's very handy if you needed to get access to your data fairly quick, um, you can access it there. I seem to be losing access here with my mobile. This is all that happens on a, on a live demo. Let's see, can we get it to connect again there? Okay. So we'll try and show that to you again there. So if we open up that book one, that XLS file. I think 
think everyone's internet is under pressure these days. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's just typical now. It doesn't work in the earlier, but look, essentially you can use that OneDrive app, and away you go. Um, you can take photos and upload um images directly to OneDrive from your mobile device as well, which is a pretty cool feature. So, um, for some reason that's not working, but sure, that's just typical nature of a, a live demonstration. But um, I can jump back into our machine here again and I'll show you how you could share a file with somebody that you need to share data with. So we have this company data file here and this is within Windows Explorer. You can do this from within Excel as well and from online as well and from the app. Every, it's, it's a consistent experience across um, everyone's all devices. So all you do is right click on the file and you go share. And it will come up with the share options there. So the first link you have here is a link that anyone can edit. So essentially, if you put in someone's email address here, it will send them a link and they'll be able to click on it. And there's no limitation on what they can do with that, that file. They can also send that link on to anybody else and they can access that file as well. So look, if the data isn't that sensitive, you might be happy with that option or you might want to implement a more restrictive share as well from the file that you're you're sending. So all you do there is hit that little arrow and you can get the different options here. So in this play, in this scenario, we're in a company called Contoso, but if it was Trojan or any of your own businesses, you'll see your company name there. And if you tick that, that means anyone within your organization can edit the file, but nobody outside the organization can edit it. So, um, as long as you have that allow editing button ticked. Um, people with existing access, that would be someone that you've already shared the file with that you're just resending another link to them. Um, the other option then is specific people. So if you have specific people, you can send it to individuals and only those users can access that file. So if you share that with me to my email address, um, I would have to sign in to access that file because it's probably sensitive information. So it's a, it's, a, it's a very restrictive option, but sometimes whatever you're sharing would actually require that you block it down. Um, also, you can prevent the user who's receiving the link from editing the file. So they can only view it online. They can download the file by default, but if you tick that box there, that'll prevent them from downloading it. So what you're doing there now is preventing the user from downloading the file and editing, editing, editing it. So if it's an Excel document and they click on the link, it'll open up in the Excel viewer online only and they'll be able to view and that's about it. So we'll just, we'll apply that setting here and then you can put in um, someone's email address. We'll use my Trojan one. Most people have it anyways, and you'll see dcook at not Rogan, it should be Trojan, and click on that. So that means anyone in this list here, you can put in 10 email addresses or whatever, and you can add in a message here. So this is essentially sending an email. You'll see this email in your sent items in your Outlook, but it's um, sending an email to say, um, here's the link, and I'll show you that email, so, and how it gets formatted. Just while you're writing that deck, then I know I think we're running a bit over time this morning because I know yeah. you would talk all day about this. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be quite happy to, yeah. <laughs> but for anyone that can't stay on, uh, I will be sending out a recording of the whole thing. So if you want to catch up with us later, you can and you can send in questions afterwards and we'll get back to you. That's no problem. For anyone who can stick with us for the rest of the demo, please do and, and we'll try and go through it. We'll try and move deck then along swiftly. <laughs> yeah, I have a tendency to waffle and that's uh, that's an issue I'll have to I'll have to get control of. But anyways, yeah. So <laughs> thanks and for that. Um okay, so that's the link sent. And if we look here online and we look in on there, so we're just going to use Outlook online. There's the email I just sent there. I know the time is wrong, but um, that's because it's in a different time zone. But say, that's essentially what the recipient will receive. Hi, Declan, please find link to important file, company data. They click on that and then they're able to open it. And it's as simple as that. Um, what I want to show you as well is how to remove that share from that file. 
Uh, so all you do is go back into the file there, right click on it and go share. And go to the three dots up here at the top for more options. And you get the manage access option. And you'll see the people who have access to this file here and you can that's the link that I will be using. All you do is click on it and remove that link and delete the link and essentially means that file is no longer shared. And an easy way for you to see if a file is shared, generally there's a little silhouette of a person here. That means there's more than one user that's able to access the file. So um, I'll try and move on fairly quick here. So I just want to show you how to turn on OneDrive backup as well. I won't delay on this one. This is one you really should talk to us in Trojan about before you turn on, because if you have large amounts of data, it could kill your internet connection. So you open up OneDrive, you go into your settings, you can go into your backup and you can manage your backup here. And all you do is tick which folders you want to back up, any one of those, and then you start your backup. And essentially, anytime you save into any of those directories, they'll be synced up online and um, you'll be able to access those folders online or in, on any device, especially handy for ransomware attacks or whatever that you have a copy of your data. So certainly we um, talk to us if you need to enable that or interested in doing that. So we've gone through the file sharing as well. And um, I just want to show you one last feature and then we can wrap up there is um, the autosave feature and version history of your files. So this is very powerful. So if I open up um, Excel here, and we open up one of our documents, go file and open. You can connect your Excel directly to your OneDrive account. So I have it done here, so I click on that. And it's only going to display my Excel documents. Click on your company data file. And that's it loaded there sales targets and everything there. So that's your data. Um, essentially, I can make any changes I want here. That's pretty straightforward, but it might be worth noting this is the whole collaboration side of things. I'll just show you quickly if we go online and open up that exact same file. So company data here. This is just to give an example. It's very hard to show how data collaboration works on a live environment, which you should be able to see. Just give it a second to load. You see there, that's the cell I'm actually on locally. The MA cell there is the cell I'm on on my local uh, Excel here. And when I move off that cell, that file should update automatically. So you're back in here. So essentially I can see here locally as well on my Excel that there's another user up here in in L7 or L6 as well. So you can see both users are working in the same document at the same time. It's very handy if um, different people can work across different tabs. A lot of businesses use very large Excel documents and it's, it can be troublesome if multiple users want to work on it at the same time. So the online collaboration like this is very handy. So um, that's, that's just very brief look on that. And I also want to show you the version history because you have auto save on up here on the top left. Every change you make is automatically saved up to the cloud. And you can also go down here into your info on the document. So if someone made a complete aims of the file, you can go into your version history here. And that's every version of that document. There's a fair few changes being made on that. And 11.29 was the last time I edited that, which was, was those few entries there. But you can open up the previous version and you can copy data out of it manually, or you can just restore it and overwrite the live one. So um, that's pretty much it. Um, I hope you found that useful. Uh, there's a lot of cool features there and Generally, you are already paying for it if you have an Office 365 license, so why not use it? That would be what I would say. Um, if anyone has any questions, you can just fire them in, in there. Um, I can see one there from someone. If I have a laptop and a PC, can I have data from both sets of computers on OneDrive? Yes, you can. But there's only one thing to watch out there, that if you are, say, you're back, 
you can keep the data sets the same, there's no problem. But if you do turn on the backup for your desktop and documents on one device and you turn it on on the other one, it will merge both devices. So essentially you'll have the same desktop, same documents. Um, oh, that makes sense. And does it matter which browser I use to access OneDrive for business? No, as long as it's a modern browser, Google Chrome, Firefox, or even Microsoft Edge, I'd keep away from Internet Explorer because it basically it's going to go end of life. Edge is the latest one from Microsoft, but any of those three modern browsers, you'll have absolutely no problem. Um, it might be worth noting as well that if you're using Windows 7, it might be troublesome, but um, here as well to use Windows 10 and use Windows 7 as out of support. So that's it. Um, I don't see any other questions coming in there. So no, I think we're all OK this morning. Yeah. Sometimes it can take a minute for them to come in. But yeah. uh, no, that was very useful. Thanks. Yeah, Thanks for no that. Delegate. Sorry for rushing through it there at the no, end. No, <laughs> well, look, you're right, Anne, because I would spend an hour talking about OneDrive and people would be getting annoyed in. So. <laughs> Um, we can always come back and do another one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, we can surely. And look, if anyone has any questions, just fire them across to us via email or give us a call, you know, and we'll help you get set up. It's no problem at all. And then next week we're going through SharePoint. Like I said, we'll run through kind of the differences of, of OneDrive and SharePoint and, and when to use each one. And yeah, hopefully that'll be exactly. 11 o'clock next week. So definitely join us back for that one again. Yeah, that's and perfect. Thanks for, um, for joining this morning. Thank you, everyone. We'll talk to you all soon. Bye. 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 -bye.